sisters in Christ, welcome to that fastest 30 minutes in broadcast again. Well, I'm your host, Prophet Johnson, and uh, we're going to get started again on tonight. We're talking about teachings of the world, and when you think about it, just the title itself is almost like eye-opening, you know, it's an eye-awakening thing, you know, and just sit there and think about, well, what can the world teach? Everything, <laughs> everything, and oftentimes I think about the great scientists and the great expositors and those that wrote the books and history, and I like hieroglyphics and cuneiforms and the ancient Greek and the Hebrew languages, Latin, those are the things I really like to study. Um, and just finding out what it was throughout history in the beginning. And when you think about the Garden of Eden and all of the wisdom of Solomon, you know, Solomon being the widest man on the face of this earth that there ever was. And, you know, think about the guys, guys in today's time, you know, that are geniuses. Solomon's a hundred times smarter than what they are right now in today's time, so King Solomon probably would have just blew us all out. But my point is this, is that all of those things are historical records, just like locked inside the chronological order of a tree with the rings. In each year of that tree's life, in each year of your life and my life tells a story. But our life is as a vapor of mist in the nostrils of God. So we're here one day, and according to him, we're gone, to, gone the next. And man, days are short, as Job would say, and full of many troubles. And I don't want to get into that because I didn't realize as the young people do, do not realize now, how short life is until you get older. But I kind of did realize it. But just like other people, you know, we don't pay things any attention. So the next thing you know, we're going by life, and it's zooming by. Children are born in elementary school and junior high and high school and college and children and marriage and there you are, grandpa and a grandma. Well, that was God's plan. That was God's will. For you to enjoy the fruits of your labor, to eat, drink, and to be merry. This is why I do not understand, I, 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 except God will give the knowledge and the wisdom of it all, of how a rich person or a person with a lot of money can be miserable or sad or unhappy. And for those of you who are rich and, <laughs> and have all that money, say, well, I wish I could tell you how. <laughs> well, let me tell you what I really would like to know because the only reason I'm miserable and sad and unhappy and vexed is because I be broke. Every time I get money, I get happy. You know, to pay bills, I'm happy. The only time I was ever sad and miserable and vexed was when I didn't have no money to pay bills or to feed the family or to take care of the children. And there was much suffering in those days. Imagine living off of $25 a week and having to feed four people with $25 a week. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, welcome to that fastest 30 minutes in broadcast. And uh, we thank God for it. Let's go back to the book of Luke, chapter number 16. And I've got to hurry tonight because the weekend is coming up. 
we're getting ready for the Super Bowl, and um, it's just going to be just a high-octane atmosphere all weekend. But I'm not getting caught up in it because I'm getting caught up with the Word of God. But I get caught up into that later on for those of those who say, well, yeah, you will. No, I'm not getting caught up with that. No, not really. <coughs> Verse number 10 and, and Luke chapter number 16. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Now, <laughs> this really don't need no explanation except when your boss leaves you in charge. He is testing you to see if he can trust you with the safe, with the money, with the security system, with the telephone. So the boss walk out and give you the keys. But you don't know he's outside sitting in the car at home looking at you on the computer. So he want to know, can I trust you not to steal anything from me? You know, that's all I want. And you must have the integrity and the character to say, boss, you really don't have nothing for me to steal, nor that I want to steal. Because that extra $100 that you may steal, or $1,000, or $10,000, whatever, you, whatever, it's not worth the conviction of your soul, the risk of your future. To take ill-fated gain that has no merit in life in which you're going to blow on pleasure anyway. You know, and uh, I don't want to get into this because I don't want to chase nothing too much tonight. But I, I remember back in the day in the projects of Mississippi, you know, one of the brothers, you know, that we hung out with, he went up there and got... $22, $27 from the sister upstairs that clapped the back and then went into the house and got the money. And somebody saw him jumping off the porch, the back. Well, long story short, we was walking back from practice or school or something, and good Lord, we were starving. And uh, when I say starving, I don't mean starving, but that's just the word that I use in Mississippi terms. And we're little boys, no more than, what, 11 to 12 years old. But this other dude had done stole the money. And so he stopped at the place called the Cream Cup, and they made those big, juicy hamburgers. Nothing like the stuff you got now. The kind that, the, the real deal hamburgers, okay? And so he was there eating that food and stuff and everything else, and he was like, well, do y'all want me to buy you a hamburger or buy y'all something to eat? We was like, well, no, not really, because we knew something was up. So instead of buying us the food, he decided to give one brother $7 and give me $5 or whatever. And we was walking up the street, we were just feeling bad about it. God, we just got this bad feeling. And um, the next thing you know, well, I don't know if he bought us a hamburger. No, we didn't get no hamburger. The next thing you know, my cousin said, Scott, something ain't right. I just don't feel right. Let's take this money and give it back to old Buddy Row. I won't call his name, you know, who can knows them and all of and give him old Buddy Row. So we went back and we said, no, man, we, don't, we just don't want the money. We just don't want it. Well, lo and behold, when we got back home to the projects of Mississippi, guess who was there waiting on them? The police. The police. And the police um, came, and, and there he was up there. They was like, hey, y'all come here. We like, what? Well, well, police like, you, you got the money. Yeah, long story short, I'm trying to finish it, but you need to hear this. You got to learn to hear this stuff. And it got us, and they was like, did y'all get any of the money? We was like, no, he gave us some, but we gave it back to him. Did he buy y'all anything to eat? No, we didn't get nothing to eat. You see how God did that? And so he got in trouble. But the sister got uh, about $20 of her money back because that was a lot of money back then, okay? But he got in trouble. So God works in mysterious ways to keep your conscience clean and free. 
you've got to learn the teachings of the world to be faithful. I mean, hey, minister, you know, I heard a good one there, brother. You got to hear this right here. They said the only time that there was totally no unemployment, the only time America was debt free and nobody did not have a job, everybody had a job, they said the only time that there was no unemployment was during slavery. <laughs> I know that's not funny, but it's true, right? Every black man was employed during slavery. There was no unemployment. <coughs> All right. Here we go. You don't have to be snide and smart about it. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. I wish to God I would have listened to these things. Because you can have a person that appears to be faithful to you, serving you, but that person is unjust. You see what I mean? So they can throw you off right there. You're thinking, I got a faithful op. I'm a, I'm a bearer. God, here, this tickle in this place. <coughs> I've got a faithful armor bearer or whatever. But guess what? They're, they're not right. They got little things that they're doing behind your back. And um, God is really, really just letting you see that you just, you just have to watch, you know, things behind your back, and you just got to be faithful. Now, verse number 11 in Luke 16, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, if you, if you can't be faithful with the sinner's stuff, some people, so many people got sham jobs. They are sham masters. And I get tickled when I see them. And especially the CEOs at the top and all of that. And I think about, you know, the money. And I think, God, they're, they're all rich. They're all wealthy and they're all rich. And there are some people that go to jobs and sit down on jobs and answer telephone, they do nothing. And they get paid lots of money just for really doing probably no manual labor. And you can say it's their training, their education, their schooling, or whatever. Those people are privileged, and they are blessed. And you are not supposed to take that for granted because there are people out there that are working hard, digging ditches, putting down lines, you know, doing hard work, putting houses together. And they make a living decent enough to live. But it's nothing extravagant or anything like that, you know. So you just got to be faithful over a few things. He says, who will commit to your trust the true riches? God is saying, how can I trust you with kingdom things and you can't even handle earthly things? People stealing in today's time don't have a conscience. <laughs> they, 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 they lie. There, there is no conscience among much of the species of the human race in today's time. So in the last days, the love of many would wax cold and men's hearts would fail them because of fear. So there is such a something, selfish rule in the world. I mean, that the, the people, they I don't, don't care. I'm trying so hard to say what I'm trying to say until I can't say it because it's deep frustration within me <coughs> to see and to know that the church is so dead, such a foregone conclusion, such an obsoletable entity in today's time, brokenness and weak and 
you see the same game being played and the same drumbeat among teachers and preachers and television. And, and it's the same, except they don't have as many people as they used to have. But it's the same thing of nothing. Give, so this, that, conference. No God, no power, no truth, none whatsoever. And they fail to do what I warn the whole world that the church must do. And that is to tell the truth about hatred and racism, and they cannot do it. And so we are in a time to where men are going to have to turn back to God. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, that which is another man, who shall give you that which is your own? Have you noticed that the bank is another man? And the bank is faithful with your money. You trust them, don't you? But why can't people trust people outside the bank, <laughs> you know? If you're not faithful in taking care of my dogs, then how do I think that you're going to be faithful in taking care of somebody else's dogs, their pets? You know what I mean? You don't want to hurt your animal, so you wouldn't want to hurt no one else's animal. So God is saying, if I can't trust you with this, what make you think I'm going to be able to trust you with kingdom agenda things? Can't trust you because you're not faithful over a few things. And I'll make you ruler over much. Here it comes. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, the riches of this world. God said, there is no way. <laughs> you, you, you think, you think that you go, go and pray a holy prayer to God, fast, seek his face, cry out to him for loved ones, for help, for strength, for mercy? Or do you think that you're going to go to the Academy Awards? <laughs> wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Or you're going to go to the Super Bowl? Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> and get your award or enjoy the ball game over God? Which one do you think you're going to choose? <laughs> Wait a minute, wait. Are you going to go to church or are you going to go to the Super Bowl? Right? You see how it works? Well, I can go and pray later. No, you're not. You've got to pray now at that time. At the same time the Super Bowl and the Grammy Award, you've got to choose which one you're going to go to, God or the Super Bowl. You see. Prophet Joseph, what about you? I'm going to the Lord. I care less about a Super Bowl. I care less about a Grammy. I care less about billions of dollars. There's nothing on earth that can buy me. Satan already went to Jesus to try to buy me. Jesus said he costs too much. He's priceless. The devil said he is worthless. Jesus said he's the best. And one of the best I've got, he's the truth teller. That's why you want him. No amount of money. No amount. No amount. 
I wouldn't even sell my dog for a million dollars. <laughs> no, yes, you would. No, you no. Ask Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't even sell my dog for a billion dollars. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, you're lying. Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus. Why? Because you cannot purchase love. You can't sell love. It's too much love. I will never again have love like that. You see, unconditional love. So a billion dollars for my little dog PJ, 13 pound Jack Russell, I wouldn't be able to sleep. The only way that he can leave me is to die. You see the love? That's the same way God feels about us. You can't buy us. We've already been bought. We was purchased with love. And it was bloody love that brought us, that bought us, that purchased us. Prophet Johnson, yes, ask Jesus. I, get, I bet you billionaire can bring him. Bring him. Bring any billionaire, any of them. I will not do it because I don't care about money. <laughs> Y'all do. <laughs> I never have. I only use it to live. I know God. And I know something y'all don't know. And if y'all knew what I knew, y'all, help me, Jesus. Lord, help me. I've been dying so far. But if they knew, Sure. The glory. And if they have seen what I've seen, they would know. By God, they would know. But you sort of punished me <laughs> with this on earth. As a human, you punish me with seeing and knowing something that they will never believe or see or know until they die. And you let me see this while I'm alive as a human. And they will never believe it. Ever, ever. God. Being a prophet. Prophet, seer, why show me the worlds and I cannot tell them? Oh, I've seen the ends of the earth and I've seen the coming of them. Here it is. In verse number 14, now we're going to bring in some of the church folks here. Here we go. And the Pharisees also who were covetous, <laughs> jealous, jealous, the worst thing that you could ever have in your life is a man or a woman that you connected to that's jealous of you, is a mother or father and family members that's jealous of you. Y'all have no idea. Covetousness is a very evil thing. To want what somebody else got. Oh my God. Oh my God. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard these things, all these things, and they derived him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who do you think he is? Who do, he, who do he think he is? You know? Joseph, the son of, uh, Jesus, the son of a carpenter? 
Jesus being the son of a carpenter, you might have thought he would have been a Mexican. You know? Here it is. And he said unto them, you are they which justify yourselves before men. Did y'all hear that? How many people did you do you know that do that? Tons of them. They make themselves look good. They justify themselves in front of men. The glory of men. The glory of men. Oh my God, brothers and sisters in Christ. You're part of your church organization part of the dysfunctional functions that y'all have. You know what most of them are doing? They're seeking the glory of men throughout churches, pastors and leaders, conferences, denominations. God help y'all. Help us all. You are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. You hear that? It don't register, do it. This Bible really means nothing. Why don't we just say, to hell with the Bible, to hell with God's word. That's the way we feel, don't we? That's the way we feel, y'all. The hell with God's word. The hell with the Bible. The hell with church. The hell with all of it. I pity those people. Because I just read you something that people don't even listen to. No to heaven with it. To heaven with the word of God. To heaven with the Bible. And to hell with everything that didn't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because that's where it's going. So to hell with everything else except the word of God. God forgive me. Father, forgive us all. Forgive me, Father. Father, forgive me. But God know at your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Let me tell you something. You think God won't take you down? God will let you go. He'll let you fall. He'll let the devil take you down. Because men are picking you up. I try so hard not to use me as no more examples. The least, the, the least that I can but they all that thought they had me up, I knew none of them had me. I knew none of them had me. All of them. There's not a one to this day. Only one left. That's Arby. <laughs> I love you, man. Greatest armor bearer in the world. Do you think I forget about you? Even in calling? No, I don't. If only you knew. If only y'all knew. If only y'all knew. Y'all all be praying for Prophet Johnson right now. Let me tell you something. It's bad to go to hell. And when you come out of hell, you come to find out that you're carrying hell on top of your shoulder. And you thought you got out. And you look up over your shoulder, that hell is still with you. Get ready to finish. The law and the prophets until John, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man press it into it. Now they some people in the Baptist churches, they used to say that when the prophets died out with John, you know, it's because they didn't want no prophets coming to their church to tell them the truth. So they tried to get rid of them. That's not true. The kingdom is pressed into. You press your way <coughs> into the kingdom. And that's easy to understand, y'all. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Now, watch this. After I read all of that, 
there's only one verse that Jesus is going to speak concerning. Watch this. Divorce. Last verse. Whosoever put it away his wife and married another committed adultery. What? And whosoever married her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. <laughs> That's all he had to say about divorce because he hates divorce. God had nothing to say. You want to put her away? Okay, go commit adultery. You want to marry her? Her husband got rid of her? Go marry her. You commit adultery with her now. Thank God for forgiving. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I married in adultery. <laughs> tell it like it is, prophet. Don't I tell it? I married in adultery. That you better believe. That's my time. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. That's how bad the devil got me. And I wish to God I never did. Biggest thing I ever did in my life. So don't you marry an adultery. I married an adultery. You better believe that. All because of a lie. That's going to be my time. Guys, will you repeat after me? I know he had to say something about it. I ain't stood you either. <laughs> Remember, I'm talking to you too. <laughs> Repeat after me and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. That's my time, guys. Thank you for yours. Truth teller, hardcore truth. This is, and don't forget, teachings of the world. Y'all have a good night. Love you too. Bye.